try to stay more five, but my morning generally starts late. So it's good morning. First of all, thank you for having invited me. You know, it's always nice to interact with the young. I always learn something from them, especially from my Gunda sons and audience. Yeah. They humiliate you, and you really know what it means to be humiliated. Right? Okay, you know, whenever I come to any place of learning, I always quote Ramesh. I always quote a quote which Ramesh told me. That you know, who said that Ramesh? I think uh, Churchill said. Churchill said that the future battles of Trafalgar will not be won in the waters of the Atlantic, but in the territories of it. I think it's, it's very important what he said, right? Also, I want to give my heartfelt congratulations to Nimish Bhai Durgesh, the junior Patni, the junior Shah, for the tremendous work they're doing for film. It's a great feeling of pride that I get whenever I come here. So, I think it will be a great legacy, right? Now, coming to my talk, I have been asked to talk about behavioral science. Let's see, I have two interests in life, markets and government. And I have been able to make a lot of effort to understand the interests, you know, the behavioral sciences as far as markets are concerned. But I want more experience in understanding the behavioral science as far as women are concerned. <laughs> that will be more interesting. <laughs> and I hope. You know, I tell you, I don't know much, I have never read any lecture on behavioral science. I just asked my partner to make a small note on it, which I went through. You know, I think behavioral science is some by a market there. You know, basically, behavioral sciences is concerned with bias. We have to be biased. And markets are there because there is bias. If everybody was to have the same opinion, right, and people have different opinions because they have different assessments. Now, you may call my assessment as bias. I am bullish, you will say I am biased. I will say you are bearish, you are biased. So basically it's great. You must understand that markets are there because there is bias, because there are differences. Right? And this can never be corrected. There can never be a perfect one. I think behavioral sciences is, is in my opinion more concerned with understanding the general mentality of people. Right? in relation to the market realities. Of course, market realities may, be, may mean different things to different people. Right? You may think that market is overvalued, I may say it's undervalued. But we must, there has to be some point in which, you know, bias and a herd, a bias of a herd is understood. I mean, let us say for the internet bubble. I mean, there, I think, there was absolute bias towards bullishness. There is no question. Right? As a herd. Also in our interaction with individuals, after all, our opinion in markets is what we observe. And also what we observe or what we learn when we discuss with other people whose opinions we value or what we read in the press. Now I think press is not so important as understanding that when we interact with certain humans, they have certain biases. Right? I mean, you meet Ketan Parikh, he is always bullish. Right? Anybody at Rakesh Nova may have a bias towards a certain stock. So when we interact with humans, it is important to understand and constant interaction should, be, should enable us to assess a person's bias. And Mr. Arajan Ramani is the expert in that. Anyway. He knows who is biased toward what, and he will listen to them, not argue. But he will take into his system after taking into account the other person's bias. So what I am trying to point out is that the markets are going to remain imperfect because there is bias, and therefore there are different opinions. Therefore there is market. Right? There are occasions when, in a herd, since time immemorial, you know, people get. The market as a whole gets biased. I think we must recognize that, but we must not challenge that usually. Because biases can last, you know, if you had, if you had, uh, if you had 
short sold internet stocks in 1988 you know in the forum mr john templeton he wrote so much about the bias there and the you know unsustainable and unreasonable valuations he sold short but he sold short only after it was clear that, that the entire book is broke so you know just because you are of the opinion and your opinion may be right in the wrong term don't try to use that opinion if himachal was a fraud at 200 and himachal was a fraud at 5000 what would you say only himachal at 200 would have been in the forum so you have time how you can take advantage of bias see the herd mentality has remained the same since time you know. and i think it will remain the same for time you know. right from the south sea bubble to the internet bubble there is absolutely a, don't be surprised look upon it as an opportunity don't be critical of it markets always exceed on the top and on the bottom in that market we have lies our lies our uh, you know opportunity and ramesh said what we want to do you want to make money here right no i think also one bias which is very important which i am very bad at is confirmation bias if i believe in something i don't tend to listen to other people's opinion to the extent that i should i think that's very important that we must always examine reexamine and reexamine our thoughts of course sometimes conviction pays sometimes it doesn't but you cannot totally ignore what other people are saying right so i think there is a bias known as a confirmation bias i think we should be very careful about that and time is talking with lot of mistakes that they yes i personally have a confirmation bias and i need to improve it see one very big bias is people are influenced by friends my dear friend alisha used to always say there is price induced by himself And that bias sometimes is a self-fulfilling prophecy. That a stock has cost a 200-day average, so it's going to go up less or more. Right? So I think we should not be, you know, what I would say, in, we should be influenced by price in trading, but we should not be influenced by price beyond the point. Also, there is a fallacy that. You know, if I have made an investment in a stock, and that stock has done wonderfully well, there are a lot of improbabilities. I buy another stock, but because I will prove right in one stock, I will say no, no. I will prove right even in this. Right. So this, this I would call is what I call a gamble, gambler bias. Right. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Another very big bias I find a lot of young people today, I think, which is extremely important. I think they are too much biased about what goes. This is the beginning and end of the world. I mean, you have to approach the market with a fresh mind. We are prejudicing our children's mind when they are 16, 17. Buffet, buffet, buffet. I mean, I don't think you should be prejudiced by any individual. You should try and understand what he is doing. You should pay respect to them. But if Buffett did this, and I don't do what he did, I will not make money. That is all. Right? I don't know. You know, Buffett has certain conditions in in America. Yeah? The American economy had the biggest bull market from 1987 to 2007. He bought. You look at the gain he has made on stocks, which he has bought after 2000. Actually, he bought. He bought Guinness breweries. He bought so many stocks. They have not done well at all. His stock portfolio in general will last. I'm not challenging his ability, but I'm only saying that even the mighty can fall. He may be rich, but that he has not made the money in the quoted investments in which I and you can make. So please don't get prejudiced that Soros is great and Buffett is great and this fellow is great and just because what he has done, I must try and replicate. I think read everybody, observe everybody, respect him, but form your own opinion. Also, I don't have a bias of analysis by analysis. Just as you said, know that you know investment is more a broad thing. That's the reason. So do analyze, but don't get paralyzed. I mean, right? 
Also, we get so much information now. Yesterday I was reading an article by a CEO of a very large consultancy firm. He is saying limit the news that comes to you. So you get so much muddled in that or at least learn very, very, very uh, accurately to, to, you know, filter. And I can also say one thing, just as I started, that you know, Markets and boom, I would like to know why I say both. Because markets are like boom. Sir John Tepperton said. He said we are always commanding, always mistakes, always uncertain. I added we are always volatile, always exciting. <laughs> right? Especially for all of you at this young age. So we must try and understand, and one thing I can tell you, that you cannot learn to have a relationship with a woman without experience. Without experience. You can't, you know, you can't be taught how to learn markets or how to learn psychology of markets. You have to experience it. No amount of behavioral sciences reading is going to teach you markets. It's like sex, it can't be taught, it has to be learned. Right? And second thing also is that, see, we, the, the, the prejudices of the humans is also, you know, all humans have a basic nature. And our prejudices also arise because of our nature. Some of our very fickle mind, some of us have deep conviction, right? Some of some of us, you know, are very insecure. So I think we should also examine our own personalities. And this is not about the market only; it's about a broad personality trait. So we must also examine whether our own I would say individualistic characteristics affect our bias in the markets. Am I always bullish? Am I always bearish? Do I always have confirmation bias? Do I always hope beyond hope? So I don't know much about behavioral science. These are just some of my observations. I can tell you one thing, you can't learn too much about behavioral science by reading books. Otherwise psychologists must have been the richest men in the stock market. Right? You have to experience. You have to open mind, right? So here it is what I would like to say about behavioral sciences. Now I, have, I would like to come to investing. See, a lot of people talk about value investing. See, the two most difficult adjectives in English language are beauty and pearl and value investing. So personal and it's, it cannot be, there's no formula for it. What is value? Who is there guy saying in CNBC? That at 12 times P there is value and at 70 times P there is no value. What is the standard for formula by which you say that there is value and there is no value? Only time will say whether a stock had value when you purchased it or not. If you gain it had value, if you didn't gain it, it didn't have value. Right? And I think there are two concepts of value investing rather than one. One is see markets can make a lot of valuation mistakes. Suppose I have a stock which is liquid, which is at 20 rupees, and I think the true value of this stock is 50 rupees. I have no comments about its business model, with regard to its present assets, present or and I have no comment about its future. Right? So, and I think that markets are in such a situation that they are a phase where I think markets will improve, sentiment will improve, and markets will grow. So, I can buy a stock, I will even term that as value investing. And then is the you know, second part of value investing where I tend to examine the business model of right? And then I tend to extrapolate what kind of earnings growth the company could have over the next five seven years. And then I tend to see that what is the present price of the stock and what value I could get if this stock would, you know, over the next five seven years grow in earnings as I had. What is, which is what Mr. Buffet's He's doing it not for five, seven years, he's doing it for 50 years, as he says. Right? So I think these are two aspects of investing. Now how I choose an investment is, see I basically think that nobody can be greater than the opportunity. You may set up 100 flames, but if they are not 50,000, 1 lakh, 5 lakh, if India was not a young country, and a growing country flame would be nothing. If you look at Infosys, Infosys, would, when Infosys came in 93, there was no idea of the internet. Nobody had an idea of information technology. 
will expand in application the way it did. But the fact is that Infosys did nothing to create the internet, right? And because of the internet and the explosion in information technology, right? Infosys could be what Infosys is. So in my 93 of internet, I was talking about this. And information technology will explode at this level. Nobody understands that will level it will explode. And I think that is what, you know, absolutely do the opportunity for Infosys. So first we have to look at opportunity. College growth in India is going to be limited in the growth. The growth in the Indian, uh, you know, toothpaste market limits college growth. So first thing I have to examine college, I have to examine what kind of expansion they can take place in the college market, in the Indian toothpaste market. What is college market chain? How it can be? Right? But I feel so. Therefore, I think, and you know, the consumption of agrochemicals in India is below Bangladesh and below Pakistan. And it is shown that every one dollar spent on agrochemicals is reaching, is, is resulting in eight dollars of savings. Right? So I think the opportunity for values is on this. Second thing is then I look at competitiveness. So in a capitalist society, an opportunity there's cannot, you know, opportunity cannot be cannot be made profitable unless there is some unique ability to offer. In, in Alice's case, I think it is distribution. Like it could be management, it could be technology, it could be trade barriers, it could be capital. Right? And it is shown that, see, Info, Infosys and one other company, which is not just 5% of Infosys size, started, that company started earlier than Infosys. I forget its name. Mastech. Huh? Mastech. Mastech. Now, what was the reason of the growth of software industry in India? Because of the availability of good software engineers at very reasonable prices. The opportunity for mass tech and Infosys was the same. Anybody could access Indian software engineers. But look at the way Infosys and TCR has been able to do. So that's a profitability that they were able to train the engineers well. They were to market themselves better to the clients. Right? So we must look at a competitive level. Then, you know, Dugesh once asked me, should I invest in the small caps or the large caps? I said, Rudesh, it's my dream to invest in the small caps, which will ultimately become large caps. I lost a lot of capital before I tried to do that. But nevertheless, it's still my dream. Right? So the question is, is what is the company scale? And you know, great are the challenges of scale. Capital, you know, uh, entrepreneurial activity. Some, some of my private group investments, I see one of the biggest Problems of growth is because the entrepreneur doesn't want to give up any control. He wants to do everything himself. Then opportunity, competition. See, your small cap will become only large cap. Only if you are able to turn a, a, a small business into a large scalability. So I think you have that scalability. Then I think I look at people. It's a very, very, it's a very, very, you know, intuitive judgment. I tell you about title. I first bought some shares. I went to meet Mr. Butt. My idea is always to take the last day appointment so that you know we can be with him for long. Or uh, you take a four o'clock appointment, you say five thirty someone is coming. To take a six o'clock appointment, you will be there until nine o'clock. And I spoke to him and you know I spent four hours with him. In that time his wife must have called seven times. The eighth time he told his secretary, don't come to my room, don't take any calls, don't even inform me. And he told me that Rafi, the task is tremendous. I have to grow the business and sub the capital. And I you know I met that man, I was so impressed. And that was one of the reasons I raised my investment. So how do you judge people? Right? How do you judge culture? See, every culture of every country, every economy, every company is unique. And to ingrain culture is very difficult. To change it is more difficult. So one judgment you have to make culturally. I thought Titan, in fact, for Titan, marketing is in its blood, it is its culture. Unfortunately, margins are not. So, you know, opportunity, scalability, opportunity, competitivity, scalability. Also, you know, when you talk to entrepreneurs, do they have dreams? Do they think big? I say dream, dream big, dream with your head and eye, but your feet are not. Then also, you know, I tend to nowadays very much examine 
the working capital and the capital intensity of it. How many days get us, how many days spend it us. So you know, we did a small study and we found what is the common characteristics of all companies with high fees. I won't say expensive fees, I won't say, I'm saying high fees. More than say double the index fee or 1.8 times the index fees. First is they have 15% growth, right? Their cash flows, operating cash flows are as good as their profit and loss. They have high ROEs. They have good profit and loss. You find four characteristics in a stock, or you find four characteristics in a young stock whose P is 10 or 11. And remember one thing with scalability, as size grows, so does P. Size plays a role in peace. So we invest in a young company which is scalable, which has good culture, which has corporate governance, growth, high ROEs, good corporate, uh, some repeating corporate governance. You can make, there can be a very big expansion, not only in the earnings, but in the peace. And remember one thing, that whatever lotteries Ramesh has had, the expansion is more in the peace than in the earnings. Am I right, Ramesh? Bharat technology expansion was P is not the case. And both together means it's a jackpot. Yeah, sure. right. And I don't think, please, please don't go into analysis plan. You're investing in the future, the future is uncertain. You're investing in the realm of the possible. Yeah. Except God, nobody knows the future. And all those hard dick nevada and Esther Vajar. So I asked Ravidation one day when I was very young, about 20 years ago. Tell me, what do you think all the astrology and technical analysis? He said they all live beyond Google. <laughs> <laughs> Except for all of two friends of mine. <laughs> so don't believe all that crap. <coughs> and see, you want to be an investor, be an optimist. If you are not an optimist, don't open this. Right? I mean, the first quality you need to be a good investor is to be an and remember, it's an act of wisdom, not an act of faith. Invest on what parameters? Think of risk. Right? Then I will also say that have patience and conviction. Your patience will be tested by your conviction. But don't forget confirmation by yourself. Right? Doing the course of patience. Also, I would say is, that please don't try to call. Hear everybody, read everybody. And don't believe that investing is only when ROAs are so high and I'm seeing the 10 year future and 15 year future. I mean, you know, you play a 5 day test match, you play a T20, T50, we need to play everything. Right? And remember, make actually an independent decision. Make exit very independent, don't fall in love with stock. A lot of people tell me that you love Titan too much, and I say no. I have my emotions on my wife, girlfriend, children, mother, not many stock. Right. And this is what I can say about investing. I also want to talk about trading. You know, because trading is what is T20 What will be credit me now with love T20? They have fata but lay fata but. <laughs> so, see what is trading? Trading is momentum. I think you should be more opinionated when you are investing and less opinionated when you are trading. Leverage your skills, not your talent. Friend is your friend. Right? I said, other things you will say, I know that I have a lot of money, I have a lot of money, I have a lot of money. So, the government is going to kill everyone. Everyone is going to kill everyone. Everyone is going to kill everyone. Right? He told me one day, the government is going to kill everyone. Everyone is going to kill everyone. He said, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But, everyone is going to kill everyone. Right? 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 So, see, trading is basically more important. And I think I have the confidence. Although I, I think only in India I trade in commodities and currencies and uh, equity. But I think I can trade any market in the world. Because all that you need is 
to understand God directly, know what to risk and know where to take the loss. Right? I wish I was in America, I would have won the Mar Margaret, Mar Margaret, and Facebook had a plate line. See, when a stock is in such great reputation, <laughs> no, when a stock is in such, you know, it's a basic sense, yeah. He put it in the Himachal, Himachal, Lady, I have. Charter Kega Badla, the Pata Kega Badla, Puri Dunya and Facebook. And then that 42 becomes 40. So you know there are stop losses. No? So you know, then he started by shorting 1 million shares. 40 million, you know, 10% of the charm. 30 years ago, what is happening? You know, I'm telling you, Facebook was real, it was a real, you know, good opportunity. And you know, a lot of you know, trading takes your life, takes your blood. But I still do it. You know why? Because it's better high stuff. A lot of foreigners come to me. What percentage of your portfolio is investment? What is trading? Well, I'm not going to say anything. I'm going to say So, and then they ask me, so I said, my portfolio, my trading firm has a capital of one lakh. Because balance sheet running is hundreds of crores, but it's a capital of one lakh. And all money I get is, is, is interest paid. So I don't allocate any capital to accept the guarantee that I have Nikhil with our shares. I don't allocate any capital to trading. Because even the margin I pay is bottom. So even that one lakh, I earn one crore a year, what is the what is the RG? Right? So I think it gives the highest average, it's most exciting. Right? And also I tell you, trading gives you research. And it is the biggest feature. There is, you know, no question. I have learned a lot from trading. It makes you razor sharp. It humiliates you. It humbles you. Correct. And boss, we use leverage. We use less emotions in, in investing. In trading, don't use any emotions. If you use too much emotions, you're going to go to the poor. There has to be emotion there. Right? And a lot of these foreigners ask me, hey, but how do you, do you trade? I said, oh, I have no father gives, no father in law gives. So if I have an investor, I have to get the money, so I got it from trading only. So I trade. So how do you do that? You invest also, you trade also. Well, have you ever had a wife and mistress? <laughs> and they're both happy and apart. So you can handle your wife and a mistress, you can do trading and investing. Both. And I assure you that you must. Sorry, no, I am sure you must pay. If you want to perform in the market, then you can invest in the market. 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 How do you get capital? Papa got capital, so you can spend it on the market. That's the other thing. Right? So you must pay. And you must pay with, you know, Java Nikarina. Know the trend. No what to risk, no when to take the loss. One day my wife asked me, I said, Satta, what is the speculation you are doing? So I said, there is Tata Steel. I am bullish, I think the price will go up. The trend is upward, the price is 100. I buy 5,000, I buy 51 lakh shares. So she said, next year the price is 102, what do you do? I said, I buy another 1 lakh shares. I buy 1 lakh 50,000. So she said, next year the share is again 99. So I said, I sell the 1 and 1 lakh shares more. So she said, I don't understand. Nothing has changed. You are bullish at 100. You buy less at 100. You buy more at 102. And you sell at 99. But Satta, hey, I see Vishal cheat. So she said, I really so much. It's not a lot of value, but I'm not. Right? And regardless of what people say, see everything, even drinks. Dr. Reddy of Awful Hospital, he has one and a half drinks a day every day. And 20 minutes. Right? And in 83 and it's most active. So everything done in life to limitation is good. Aspire to be traders, don't only aspire to be this. Daddy will have daddy will have a manager. Right? Then I come to accounting. You know, somebody just give me a quote that what Einstein said. That everything that can be counted doesn't count. And everything that can be counted does not, everything that counts cannot be counted. So this accounting is, fortunately and fortunately, I am also a member of the Honorable Institute of Science of India. Right? 
I don't have solutions or practice, but I am a member of the institute. I think it's too confusing. I'm telling you, I'm especially foreign exchange policy. If you look at the foreign, there's a accounting standard. If I tell you, you will show. Let's suppose I take a property or lease from any years. So, first three years lease is one lakh a month. Right? The next, for, it says two, it's two and a half lakhs a month. The next three years is three and a half lakhs. The next three years is five lakhs. What I have to do in the, in the books, as per the accounting standard, I have to take the average of the nine years rent. Although I am paying two and a half lakhs, say the average is three lakhs seventy five thousand. So in the first year itself, I have to make pay two fifty and make a provision for all rent. Not on the income tax side, if you make a provision, you have to do TDS. So the landlord will say you are not dealing with the income, but after that, you take the TDS. But it is an accounting standard. You have to so they are so confusing. You know, keep it simple is not both the industry and the accountants who get off. I mean, it's absolutely confusing. So when I look at balance sheets, first thing I look at is the working capital. Right? Because that is where you know, a lot of Indian chore entrepreneurs, what they are doing, and I look at additions to gross income. So any company whose constant capital expenditure is high, right, and profit is very, very consistent. Because consistent profit is not the same. But if you have a growth, you can't get it. But the question is, how does it come? Right? Then I think you know, we must go to a, problem, a complete balance sheet to understand, and you can smell if there is any kind of a gochi going on there. I think accounting is important to that extent. I think we should respect companies who follow conservative policies. I think if IFRS is going to have a very big impact on its results, it should be closely studied. What are, in a lot of these infrastructure companies, you know, closing work in progress is the crucial to profit. Because work in progress is unbuilt, right, and the best of the auditors, I don't trust them. Because who signed the balance sheet of the American companies who failed, right? But if there is constant growth in work, closing work in progress, in a company, or a growth, the, in a, especially in infrastructure, if the closing work in progress is consistently, you know, more than growth in turnover, I think that's a reason to be suspicious. So, see, these are one of the examples of many factors which you need to study, you know, before you really understand the problem. And always, you should always, you know, someone has said, you must have heard that sales is what? Vanity. Profit is sanity and cash is reality. You should always look at the cash flow statement. And just because you have read a balance sheet, don't believe that it, you know, it's like a bikini that you are What it hides, what it hides, what it reveals is, uh, is good, but what it hides is vital. So balance sheet, don't really see the whole picture. But I think all of you must have some grounding in accounting and in taxation and you know law, you want to be good at this. Because I find for myself that my education as a child accountant has really helped me understand. I make the biggest call, one of the reasons I made in 19, 1999 in 1990 in Madhukar Pradesh budget is because people said they levy a tax on education. They said, what does that mean that if my child goes to cathedral school, they have to pay the government 2000 or 1000 rupees a month. So I calculated yeah, how much it could be, 50 crores a year. But education is a state subject. Central government has got no power to levy tax. And a coalition government is not going to amend the constitution for 50 crores a year. So see a basic grounding, understanding the budget, you know, as soon as it comes. Lot of things are related to accounting and budgets and law. So you must, and I think you ought to be good investor, you know, you are beyond the days now, I think Chad Accountancy is a wonderful tool for education. Provided it is done seriously and done well. If you are not done that, do some courses in accounting. Try and understand some law. And remember one thing, always read the act before you read the commentary. You know, because you must have some basic, if you read the commentary, you will never get a basic grounding in law. And you know, laws can create a lot of friction. In the Income Tax Act, 
the real definition in the world may be something else. But in the income tax, what the income tax act defines is what the value is, what the meaning is. So you, in every act, we have a definition section. This basic grounding of writing is very important. 